BBC Newcastle Radio for the North East England Inn for Anna Foster. Now, my first guest this morning is Tracy Trainer. When she was five, her mother was told that she was stupid and unlikely to achieve much. She went through school with undiagnosed dyslexia, believing that she would never overcome her limitations. It took Tracy 30 years, 30 years, a failed marriage and four kids to realize that actually she did have talent and to pluck up the faith and courage to use it. A revelation on a school run one day, more than that, more on that shorty, resulted in a children's book being written by her called Iddy and the Oracle's Quest. I spoke to Tracy last week. She's an inspirational woman. And I asked her to take me back to the very beginning of her story to tell me when she first realized she wasn't perhaps learning in the same way that other kids were. It began when I was five. And um, I remember the, the first time we realized we had a problem was when I couldn't read Janet and John books. Um, that will tell everybody my age. Um, but um, my mom would show me, you know, like, this is a ball on the first page and then we'd turn over and it would be this is a bat yeah. but um i couldn't remember so when i looked at the words they just meant nothing to me i couldn't recall that this was the same word on every page right. and so my mum went to school um to find out what was wrong with me and they just told her i had learning difficulties and, and that that's where it all began really so from the age of five i just felt like i was stupid and that stayed with me for a very long time. I never realized it was dyslexia until I was grown up. In fact, my third son, um, I knew straight away when I was trying to teach him to read that he had the same problem that I had. So I went all out to investigate what was wrong and I discovered that he had dyslexia and then realized that all the problems that he had with reading were the same as myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just thought, you know, in the 60s, when I was at school, that they didn't really know about dyslexia. But when I was pushing to get help for my son, Ben, he, he was the same. I couldn't get the school to help him. I had to fight for three years for them to acknowledge that he had dyslexia. We got a specialized um, teacher for him straight away. When I was talking to her, that's when she was explaining um, about dyslexia to me and how why I struggled. and. And then I found out that um, if you have dyslexia, your children have a 50% chance of having it too, wow. unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Goodness. So eventually you, you got some help for your son, but you'd gone through the education I'd system. I'd gone through. Um, when, when I was 13 at high school, um, I, I, di I didn't know until they gave me my... Um, what do you call it, your lesson plan, you know. Yeah. And I, I had English down there and everybody else had French. And I went to ask, you know, why, why have I got English down here? And the teacher said to me, oh, well, you can't speak English correctly, so um, you, I'm afraid you can't learn French. So I had to go to what they called an extra English lesson. So mm -hmm. from that moment on, I just, I just felt, you know, awful. Just recently, because I've been talking about it, I've been getting very emotional and I kind of forgot how much it affected me until I started telling people about it, you know. And um, I, I remember, because I came out of school with very low grade CSEs, obviously I couldn't read or write properly, um, but the one lesson that I got an A in was history, and that's because we had a history teacher who used to sit on the front of his desk, and he used to tell us stories. Yes. So, so I didn't have to read it, I could listen to him, and... Um, and, and it was a completely different way of teaching that just was was able to get to me because obviously I wasn't stupid, didn't, you know, although yeah. I thought I was. Um, but still, I left school with um, very low CSCs um, up until the age of 40. I had um, very low self-esteem. I found it very difficult to talk to people. I never would have been able to come here and talk to you. It, you know, it, it was just really bad. I used to go around in baggy trousers and oversized men's shirts, you know, to try and hide myself away from the world. You know, I, I, did, th I did think I was stupid. My first job when I left college was washing up dishes in a hotel. And um, I stayed in the hotel business up until uh, the time I got married because I didn't think I could do anything else. Yeah. So I did waitressing and chambermaiding and all those kind of things. But then I got married and my ex-husband, because we got divorced now, his job was a chef and he used to move us around a lot with his job. Mm. And we had four children, so my, my life seemed to be on hold. You know, I, 
I didn't, I couldn't, even if I'd wanted to go back to work, I couldn't because we were constantly moving. Sure. At the age of 40, I asked Paul for a divorce. He, he decided to take a job in America. So I, I was in this position where I was crying myself to sleep every night with worry about how I was going to bring up the boys and feed them, buy the clothes. Mm. And decided I had to do something about it. So um, I went to see a um, careers advisor in Wilmslow. And I told her, you know, the kind of things I liked and that maths was OK, numbers were OK. I took myself off to Stockport College to learn AAT, which is a accounting technician. Mm -hmm. Luckily for me at that stage, you know, we, li we live in England, which is amazing because... I was a single mom on tax credits, so they paid for my course. It was a big move. <laughs> That's Tracy Trainer there, um, ra really raised, believing that she was academically, well, in sound and couldn't achieve anything, except, well, that was about to change. We'll find out how and why next. Hearing at the moment Tracy Trainer's story. Tracy is a mum of four who went through school with undiagnosed dyslexia, as indeed I did. Uh, she was told that she was stupid and not able to achieve. She worked her way through, well, a succession of low-paid jobs before getting divorced and finding herself single, looking after four kids. Tracy was at a low ebb and newly divorced, trying to better herself at college, but also, well, well, she wanted to, like, just look after her kids and be the best she could be. After one fateful school run, everything seemed to change for Tracy. Here she is, explaining what happened when I caught up with her to have a chat last week. I became a Christian when I was um, 30. At the time, we were living in Africa, mm -hmm. and um, I, I, I met a lady who took me along to a Bible study and, and got to know God for the first time. <clears throat> and he's, he, just, he just empowered my life. I can't, I'd, I'd have to ask you for like a four-hour slot <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to tell you everything that happened to me in Africa, but so many uh, miracles as I see them happened that my faith, was just concreted and I, I and I believe with my whole heart that this book is a gift from God yeah. you know I, I, I do I do believe he gave it to me I never I never thought I would ever r write anything let, a, let alone a book um, but one day when we were in Africa I got into our beetle um, to take the boys to nursery school and um, when for some odd reason as I was driving along this picture of this lady popped into my head and I could see what she was wearing, I could see the colour of her eyes and her hair and mm -hmm. I could see what she was doing and it, it, it was quite odd but when I got out of the car she disappeared and I just thought to myself, well that was odd <laughs> uh, and then the next day when I got in the car she came back and then this time I could see her running through a maze and then, you know, when I got out of the car she'd gone again and this wow. went on, yeah, th this, this went on for three months and I began to think I was going potty, you know. I, I think I, I might as well, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I did really think that I was going to go potty. And then um, I'd read somewhere but that if you write something down, if it's bothering you, it helps it, you to deal with it and for it yeah. to go away. So I thought, oh, I'm, ju I'm just going to write this down and then maybe it will go away. And, and that was the start of it? That was the start of it, yeah. From the moment, Yeah, from the moment I picked up my pen, I just um, couldn't stop writing. <gasps> It just came, it came so fast. I mean, sometimes I'd, I'd say out loud, oh, slow down, slow down, I can't write that fast, you know. Goodness so, me. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what you're describing and, and, and a speed at which you're then putting it pen to paper is a discipline, a determination that somebody who left school, as you said, with very low GCSEs, yeah. it's a staggering leap, isn't it? <laughs> it? It was. I mean, I didn't, I didn't ever believe at that stage it, that it would become a book, you know, that anyone yeah. would buy it. I thought it was just for myself, and then I began to dream that maybe my boys would read it and they'd like it, and then... Um, what do your kids make of it, and your newfound strength and path? They, they're new mum, really. Yeah, um, the, the boys love it, um, and Rob, Robert uh, doesn't like to read, so he asked me to record it for him and put it on a disc, which I did, you know, Excellent just, idea. just for him. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's read it, he's listened to it twice all the way through, <laughs> you know, he, he just says he thinks it's amazing, but um, I brought them up to enjoy fantasy, you know. Friday yeah. nights was always movie night, and we used to sit around together and, 
and watch films. So they're all fantasy fans like myself. Good, good, good. Yeah. And, well, now you're remarried. Life is very different. You it seem is. to be very happy. Oh, um, I am. You're yeah. working as a finance manager. I am, yes. <laughs> and, and you're writing books. And I'm writing books. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. I, I, everything is different. I dress differently. I wear makeup when I'm going out, which I never used to do. And, yeah. you know, um, and incredible. It is different. Yeah, it's nice different. really incredible. Thank you. And, and your, your, your book is called? Iddy and the Oracle's Quest. And um, Iddy um, is short for idiot. And, um, and the character's a young boy, isn't it? He's a young boy. It starts off, um, Iddy is a, an orphan in a small village in the middle of nowhere. And they don't even know his name, so they just call him Idiot. He's called the Idiot. And as, as life, as his, as he gets a bit older, his nickname is shortened to Iddy. So he's my main character. His name is Iddy. A magician called Marcus um, is sent on a quest to find Iddy, and then they're sent on a quest to find um, the future king to help him. And the whole drive of the book is Marcus is trying to get Iddy to think differently about himself and to to cast off all these names that were put on him by other people and, you know, um, to, to realize that words are powerful and even though these words were spoken over him and put him down, that he can start to say words that are positive and reverse the effect of, of this childhood. So. What an incredible story. It Thank sounds you. great. <laughs> Thank you. Have we got another book in the working yet? We have. I'm um, two-thirds of the way through. I'm hoping um, to get it on Amazon in December. And um, it is going to be three books. The whole three books are already written in my head. <laughs> uh, and I, I can't wait to write book three because it's like the conclusion of everything and, and, <laughs> and what happens. But I'm you know, trying to be disciplined and finish writing book two first. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it all sounds very exciting. It sounds a different lifetime away from what you had to go through as a child. Yes. I, I just hope that anybody listening to the program, no matter their age, takes on board a pinch of how you've turned your life around that that's my dream that that someone would be encouraged like that that's Tracy Trainer there who after a tough time overcoming her own self-confident issues is now remarried working as a finance manager and writing children's books sounds great doesn't it which she's hoping might just help other youngsters to see past any labels that they might themselves have been stuck with